we can make keto spanakopita people. Well, these are actually spanakopita bites, keto style, and it's keto style because keto friendly ingredients and the phyllo pastry is keto friendly as well. We have had lots of people using this phyllo pastry to make all kinds of imaginative things. And if you need the phyllo pastry recipe, do click on this link now. I use fresh spinach in this recipe, but by all means, it is going to be so much easier if you use frozen that's been thawed and drained. So you can skip the first part if you like by double clicking the screen or just watch me while I work. <laughs> the nutritional information and your shopping list is listed in the description box and let's get into this recipe now. Let's first talk about the spinach. Today I'm going to be using fresh spinach, but we do want to get the spinach to a cooked and drained consistency. So you are welcome to use frozen that's been thawed out or you can use fresh. If you want to know the ratio of fresh spinach, fresh spinach, <laughs> fresh spinach, versus frozen. I actually tested this out myself, but one cup of fresh spinach equates to one eighth of a cup of cooked, thawed and drained spinach. If you're using frozen spinach that's been thawed out, we're going to be needing three cups. Drain it out properly. If you're using fresh spinach, you will need to slice and cook 24 cups of fresh spinach and that equates to 1,320 grams. <laughs> anyway, it's a lot of spinach, so let's cut it up and prepare it for cooking. Add your chopped spinach to a deep pot. Okay, you can see that I have filled my pot as much as I could, and I've still got some left over. As this cooks down, I'm just going to add it to the reduced spinach if you like. Okay, setting your burners to a medium heat. And you're gonna let this cook out for about 15 to 20 minutes, stirring constantly, making sure that the bottom isn't, you know, burning or catching. And you will see that as it reduces, it's going to release all its moisture and this is gonna to go totally down. <laughs> And when your spinach looks like this, it's ready, soft, and sort of looks like frozen spinach. We're going to strain this through a cheesecloth or a thin tea towel, and quite simply pour it into your strainer. And squeeze. <laughs> Let's set your spinach aside for now and set your burners to a medium heat. To the pan, we're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil and let that heat up. One third of a cup of green onion. Just going to saute that a little. Two tablespoons of crushed garlic. Now, I know this is a lot, but remember this is going to cover your entire filling. So you've got the spinach and the feta that we're going to add into the filling, so it's a lot. A quarter teaspoon of salt. Half teaspoon of black pepper. One teaspoon of fresh dill, chopped. and a teaspoon of lemon juice. Turn off the heat and let that cool. Now it's important to let all the components of the spanakopita cool first. Your filling will have an egg to bind everything together. So you don't want to cook your egg before necessary. Once cooled, add your cooked mixture to a bowl or you can mix it in here if your pan or pot is cool. 
And this is how my spinach has turned out. I've drained it as best as I can. And I ended up with 280 grams or one and a half cups. Add to the bowl. And I've got here 180 grams or one and a half cups of feta cheese. Just going to add that. These amounts are optional. You can decide whether you want more feta cheese or if you want more spinach, just by looking at the end result. And we're gonna crack in one egg. Now you need to mix this really well. I've got my handy tool here to break up my cheese and distribute into the spinach. Okay, and this is how my mixture looks. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's grab the pastry. Okay, obviously you might have guessed by the length of my pastry that I am going to make spanakopita the shape that I know how, which is a spiral or a coil, if you like. If you don't want to use that shape, feel free to make, you know, samosa style, or you can make them in hand pie style. You choose. There it is. I'm going to fill one side and then roll the pastry over. Pretty easy. <laughs> okay, and now I'm just making sure that it's evenly spread across my pastry. Just make it easier to roll. If you wanna make the same shape, you wanna follow these instructions. I'm making sure my baking paper is taut. I'm just going to fold it over and shape it into a round shape. I love that you can see the spinach through the pastry as well. And just keep rolling till your pastry is completely rolled. Well, my dough has completely dried out under the air conditioning. If you've worked with filo pastry before, you know that it's really flexible. So I'm gonna change my idea and just cut slices like that, and then turn them up like that and bake them until they're ready. When life gives you lemons, we make lemonade. And I'm just going to drizzle this with olive oil. I'm going to bake this at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, I've let mine go for 25 minutes and it has a little bit of browning on the top. I'll show you. <sighs> Here you go. I just love all these new options that I'm now able to have because I have a keto-friendly Fido pastry. I hope you get to try it and do let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and be well.